OK, so welcome everyone to our next session on day four of the SOAS Center of Taiwan Studies uh, Summer School. Our, uh, our next session here is Publishing in Taiwan Studies. Uh, meet the book series uh, editors. And uh, what we're going to do in today's session, we've invited um, uh, three book series uh, editors to talk about their experience of promoting Taiwan studies through the means of, uh, of publications. And uh, this is the first time we've done this kind of uh, session, but I think it also reflects the changing uh, field of Taiwan studies. Um, when I first started out, um, uh, studying in Taiwan as a as a PhD student, uh, there was only one Taiwan Studies uh, series, the Emmy Sharp uh, book series. Since then, the field has really kind of grown, um, and so we have now multiple series uh, that are also quite active. Um, and when I first met um, uh, Michael Cannings uh, here from uh, Camphor Press back in uh, 2013. Um, uh, the Camphor Press series hadn't even started and it's really remarkable to see how much has been uh, published um, um, uh, there since. Um, unfortunately, um, our speaker uh, Nikki Oldford, who's just created a new um, uh, Brittle series in Taiwan Studies, had to pull out at the last minute. So it's just going to be the three of us. So we'll have Michael Cannings, um, uh, talking to us about his experience of uh, Camphor Press, which was created in uh, in 2014. Um, we have Nikki Lin from uh, National uh, Taiwan Normal University, who's going to be talking about two series that she's involved in, uh, the Cambria Taiwan Studies um, or Taiwan Literature series, which uh, I've had the pleasure to be involved in in this um, uh, new book, uh, Son of Taiwan. Um, which is uh, stories of government uh, atrocity. So it's, it's a really nice experience uh, for me to be involved. But um, Nikki is also involved in a second series called the Springer Sinophone and uh, Taiwan Studies uh, series. Uh, and lastly, I will talk briefly about my own experience of being involved in um, um, the Routledge research on uh, Taiwan um, uh, sorry, the Routledge Research on Taiwan series, which we created in 2009 and which is featured in a lot of our um, uh, our book events. So um, um, we're going to briefly introduce our series, uh, talk about a few of our guiding questions, and then we're going to open up to uh, audience questions. So um, uh, I'd like to start with um, with Michael. Could you kind of talk us through a, a, a little bit about what is Camphor Press? How did it emerge? Um, and what kind of things do you try to to publish? Yeah, so um, hi everyone. Uh, I'm Michael Kennings, as uh, David has said. Um, I started Camphor Press with a couple of friends in 2014. Uh, at that point, um, I was based in Taiwan. Um, the two partners of mine are, are still in Taiwan and uh, I'm now back in the UK, um, moved back shortly after starting Camphor Press. So um, we're slightly different from the academic presses that um, we'll also talk about today in that uh, we are a private um, concern. We're not attached to a university or a big publishing house. We're small and independent and it's basically just the three of us um, at Camphor Press with occasional freelancers where we need them. Um, we really set out on a mission to produce books that uh, we thought weren't being given a platform uh, about Taiwan. And uh, David's just talked about the other um, series that have come along since. Um, but at the time that we were looking at it, uh, Routledge was kind of in its infancy and um, there was uh, the Emmy Sharp books had been uh, discontinued for some number of years. Um, but also in terms of sort of the general reader, we felt like there wasn't an outlet which um, which serviced people who were interested in Taiwan, but um, who weren't necessarily uh, academics or wanted to read uh, deep academic research. So it was designed really to produce the, the kind of books that I wanted to read about Taiwan um, and that I felt weren't being published. Um, and, and really the, the kind of, uh, there were a couple of books behind the genesis of Camphor Press. Um, 
One is uh, a book called Foremost and Odyssey by John Grant Ross, um, which is a, a travel log. It's not, a, not an academic uh, text at all, um, but it's kind of uh, it's, it's really well written and it's a great introduction to Taiwan for the layman. Um, and the other was uh, a Barbarian at the Gate um, by T.C. Lin, um, also known as T.C. Locke, who is a naturalized um, Taiwanese person who uh, was born in the US and uh, served in the Taiwanese army under conscription. And that didn't that couldn't find a publisher um, for what's a really fascinating story. And so we wanted to, to bring that to a wider audience. And since that point, I think we've we've kind of expanded the mission a bit. Um, so we expanded beyond Taiwan. Uh, so China was the obvious first choice, especially given the state of publishing over there um, with censorship and so on, um, that in Taiwan we were free to publish whatever we wanted. Uh, and, and since then we've gone to Korea and Japan as well. But Taiwan's really the focus for us. Um, the three of us met in Taiwan. We're still very deeply linked to the country. So uh, that's that's really where our hearts lie. Uh, since starting, we picked up some um, academic books as well. So we have a balance now of uh, books for the general reader and also uh, academic texts. So um, I probably can't see them over my shoulder there. I've tried to kind of artfully pile them up, but um, but we have um, uh, we have three uh, academic texts at the moment and we're looking to expand that um, in the future. So essentially our books cover pretty much anything about Taiwan uh, in English. There's no real restrictions we have in terms of topics that we'd like to cover. Uh, the guiding light for us is, is it interesting to the three of us who run the press? Um, so it's not really run as a commercial business. Uh, we try and turn a profit and, and pay ourselves a little bit out of it. But the guiding light is um, is the, the mission to produce uh, these books, which we hope are of a, a decent quality and of interest to to people interested in Taiwan. I just wanted to follow up on one thing, uh, Michael, because hmm. I remember that um, when Camphor first started out, you started off, I think, doing ebooks. Yes. Um, and then um, you did move into 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 uh, physical hard copies. Could yes. you kind of just comment a little bit on that um, on that process and, and what made you uh, do that that shift? Yeah. So uh, traditional publishing, as you probably know, is uh, they use something called offset printing which means that you print 500 copies or 1000 copies or something of each new book. They sit in a warehouse and gradually get sold over the next few years. Um, the the innovation that's really made um, Canfor Press possible as a print publishing house is print on demand. Mm -hmm. uh, and it kind of has a bad name from the early days of print on demand when the quality was very poor. Um, but around the same time that Canfor Press was founded, uh, a, a company came along called Ingram Spark which um, is a print on demand publisher, uh, printer, I say, and uh, they provide a very easy way for you to do uh, extremely low volumes. I mean, a single copy, um, they will print and ship to somebody if they like, which means for some, some organization like us, we can take risks. We're not looking at putting 3,000, 5,000 pounds into printing a run of books. Um, we are essentially, we've got no capital uh, going into books. So if there's something we like and we think there's maybe 100 people, 100 other people might read it, we're still going to do it. Um, mm -hmm. So that that advent of quality print on demand printing um, is, a, is a complete game changer for niche uh, books and niche publishing outlets. So when that came along and we when we worked out all the kinks of it, which is about uh, 18 months after we started, then we started to shift all of our ebooks into into print as well. Um, and so now we're probably at the stage where in terms of unit sales, um, it's about 55% in print and 45% in ebook. Wow, okay, so that's a really big um, uh, impact. Okay, thanks, yeah. Michael. And let me pass on then sure. to, uh, to Nikki to briefly introduce your two series. Oh, yes. Um, so uh, I'm currently uh, involved in two uh, book uh, Taiwan study uh, book series, and um, one is uh, Springer Nature's uh, Sign of Modern Taiwan Studies, and the other one is 
um, the uh, Canberra Press uh, Taiwan Literature uh, Translation uh, Book Series. So, uh, well, uh, first uh, I would like to uh, uh, talk a little bit about the uh, Springer Nature's uh, Sinophone and Tone Study. Um, we started about uh, two years ago, that's not long ago, and um, uh, it initially is, it came out of the uh, NTNU uh, UCLA Taiwan Study Program that uh, because we have the um, annual conference, so uh, we wanted to have the uh, the book series to publish our uh, conference paper. So uh, we're pretty uh, kind of fortunate to be able to cooperate with the um, uh, the, the Springer Nature. That, um, um, and, but, but later we, we, we wanted to change our mind. We wanted to uh, kind, of, kind of widen our scope to um, no, not just, you know, the publish the edited uh, conference paper, but uh, also the um, monograph. And OK, so we, we started like that. And and yes, and this book series, the Sinophone and Taiwan Studies, is actually uh, focused on any uh, humanity studies uh, related to Taiwan. And uh, yeah, maybe I, I should explain a little bit why we uh, call this the book series Sinophone and Taiwan Studies. Um, well, uh, there are several reasons. And the first reason is um, because uh, the Sinophone study is a film uh, initiated by uh, Professor uh, Shishume, who is the uh, yeah, who is also our uh, chief uh, editor. So we thought, okay, why not? We could, you know, this might be a good idea. Just uh, connect um, our, you know, just, just connect the uh, study of Taiwan to the kind of wider, uh, kind of uh, uh, kind of wider scope. So um, the second reason, well, is actually somehow. Uh, related to the first one, that uh, in terms of the methodology, that um, um, by combining the Sinophone studies and Taiwan study in the one book series, um, kind of allow us to um, kind of connect, you know, to link the issues uh, rooted in Taiwan, you know, to into the like a more like a comparative or more like a transnational or more um, like a relational uh, uh, kind of academic uh, discourse. So uh, there was, you know, our goal. And, and, and for this book series, we, um, our goal is to publish at least two uh, books a year. And so um, in order to uh, kind of show, you know, to have the better picture of uh, uh, the, the book series, then I'm going to show just really quick about uh, what is this like? Okay. Okay. Um. So so far we have a probably because we only have a two years. This this book series is actually quite new. So uh, so far we have uh, three books. We already published three books, and 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 also one uh, forthcoming. And the three books, you know, um, the things of the books are you know covering like. Uh, environmental literacy and and then the Taiwanese Mandarin and also the indigenous knowledge uh, in Taiwan. And 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 this one, uh, the one first coming is the uh, legacy of indigenous uh, music. Um, so um, and also we are uh, pretty happy to um, uh, to you know, recently we received uh, like uh, three more uh, book proposals, and they are about Taiwan literature and uh, Taiwan uh, Taiwan modernist arts, and then uh, I think the the uh, the third one is the kind of identity politics in um, post martial law Taiwan. So yes, if if things go smoothly, then uh, they will be published. Uh, 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 either later this year or um, next year. So, uh, so this is about the uh, Sinophone and Taiwan uh, study. And then I'm going to uh, also uh, talk about my second uh, book series. Then um, uh, it is the translation, you know, is the Taiwan literature book series. And it's a mainly the translation uh, of the uh, Taiwanese novel and uh, short story collection. 
and it is it is made possible by uh, the um, National uh, National Museum of Taiwan Literature, Taiwan Wenxue Guan. And uh, um, yeah, it's, it's because uh, uh, in the recent years, the uh, Taiwan Ministry of uh, Culture, they are that has been quite keen, you know, to promote the Taiwan literature internationally. And so uh, they uh, provide really a considerable amount of uh, grants, uh, the funds to um, uh, National Museum of Taiwan Literature, you know, to uh, sponsor the uh, translation projects and, and, and also to uh, establish the uh, database of uh, translated uh, uh, literature. So our book series, our uh, Canberra uh, Press uh, uh, book series is actually part of this bigger uh, 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 kind of larger uh, translation projects. So of course we're pretty happy to be able to work with uh, Canberra Press uh, to um, uh, to publish our uh, book series. And oh yeah, and so um, again I'm going to uh, just show really quickly how uh, they look like and. Uh, yeah. Okay. Oh, sorry. Um, no. Mm, wait a minute. Here. Okay. So, um, so far we have um, published uh, six books, and the top row, uh, the first row of uh, the three books were published last year. So, well, just. Uh, uh, came out last year, and um, the first, the first one, the Taiwanese literature reader uh, edited by me, and um, uh, are actually um, the the short story uh, collection um, of the um, Taiwan, uh, the Japanese Corona era. Um, by um, so we we the collection of uh, six um, stories written by um, the, the the prominent uh, Taiwanese writers like uh, Lai He and uh, Lai He, Yang Kui, Long Ying Zhong, etc. And uh, yes, and, and the second book is uh, is called The Sword of a Jade Mountain. Um, it is uh, Yu Shan Hun. It's written by the um, uh, prestigious indigenous uh, writer uh, Fa Fa. And, and he is also the uh, award winning uh, uh, indigenous writer. And so the third book is also very important. It's uh, a history of a Taiwan literature. Um, um, yeah, it's uh, by Ye Shi Tao. The right uh, is uh, is written by Ye Shi Tao, and this book is very important because this is the first book for uh, the Taiwan literary history. You know, the literary history of a Taiwan literature. This very important is uh, considered as the classic that everyone want to study uh, Taiwan literature must read. Well, although you know it's an original book, uh, the original uh, work was written in 1987. It's, uh, although it's uh, more than three decades ago, but uh, it's considered a classic. And the second row we can see uh, are the three books just uh, published uh, actually this May, just come out very fresh. And the first one is The Son of Taiwan. Uh, that uh, uh, David just showed us. The Sound of Taiwan, the second one is the uh, Transitions in Taiwan. Uh, these two books are about white terror and uh, also the transitional uh, uh, justice in Taiwan. Um, so, um, yes, I, and yes, I hope to uh, particularly mention that thanks to uh, uh, David's and Jewel's uh, excellent translation, you know, uh, for the um, uh, Li Ang's uh, anti-tiger, Hu Gu Po, uh, which is actually the uh, story about Xie Xue Hong. Yes, and also, yeah, the third book is about uh, queer literature. Then, uh, as um, maybe everyone knows that uh, uh, in 2019, Taiwan became the first Asian country uh, to uh, legalize the uh, same-sex marriage. So uh, in Taiwan, the, uh, the queer the LGBT activities and literatures also um, uh, receive a lot of attention. So, um, oh yeah, and one thing I'd like to um, uh, like point out is uh, the book cover. Actually, I'm pretty proud of it. 
the book cover are, you know, the, those works are from uh, the famous uh, Taiwanese artist. It's like this one is the uh, Chen Chen Bo's, uh, uh, the, the, the street view of Dan Shui. And oh, this is not the, uh, this is a photo by the uh, the Japanese anthropology, anthropologist, the um, Tori Niao Ji Rong Chang, Tori Yi Liu Zhou, yes. And, and this one is Lan Yingding, also an uh, important artist. And this one is uh, Huang Rongchen, who is uh, also the victim of the uh, white terror. And this one uh, I like very much is uh, the symbol of the uh, freedom or the uh, democracy of the white uh, wild lady. And it's the, um, by uh, the Ouyang Wen. And, and the queer literature is by the um, um, uh, Xi De Jing, who's, of course, he, he never uh, like a come out, but uh, he's uh, uh, one of the earliest, like um, uh, the, the gay uh, artist. Yes, so those are about um, the the um, uh, our book series. And and also because, you know, all the translators are, you know, they are expert in, in their fields. And not, not only, you know, the translation is very reliable, and also uh, they provide really, very really useful uh, notes. So, uh, so this is uh, actually, you know, the, our target audience for this uh, book series uh, is about uh, is academic because we want, you know, more like uh, kind of as a textbook, you know, to read um, in, in a classroom. And but I think things because uh, things is it the um, kind of uh, translation of, of short story and novel. So I think it's it can also attract uh, the, the wider uh, in kind of general uh, public audience. So we, we hope, you know, this series can really um, provide an opportunity for like a wider uh, leader, like uh, readers, you know, to uh, to understand, you know, Taiwan through, you know, reading its uh, uh, literature or, you know, just take an interest, um, take an interest in uh, maybe Taiwan, Taiwan culture, history, you know, through uh, its, its story. Yes. Fantastic. Thanks for that, uh, Nikki. Yeah, I mean, I have to say that I really love what both of you are, are doing. If you think about, I think one of the, the really frustrating issues that we had in the past was the lack of really good kind of um, non-academic books on, on Taiwan. It could drive us crazy when we went to the, the, the bookstore. So uh, that's that's what, why I really love what Camphor has been doing. And I think the uh, the same applies for the, uh, the translation uh, project. And it, I think it makes um, teaching Taiwan literature so much more viable. And, and I do hope that in the future that we can try to teach Taiwan literature because it's always been a gap of ours at uh, at SOAS. Let me just then speak, speak briefly about the, the, the Routledge uh, series. Um, I think the emergence of that series back in 2008, 2009 was related to the uh, the growth of Taiwan studies at, at that time in the early post uh, 2000s. So we had North American Taiwan Studies Conference. We had the uh, European Association of Taiwan Studies Conference emerging in 2004. And we start to see uh, a growing number of Taiwan Studies programs, particularly in Europe um, and, um, and and also in, in, the, uh, in the US. So it meant there was a growing uh, market for uh, publications particularly academic publications coming out of uh, conferences, for example, but also out of um, uh, PhDs. Um, so these were some of the kind of the key sources we were getting. But, but I think as um, I think Michael's mentioned, there were weaknesses in the existing um, uh, Taiwan studies kind of publishing field at that point in time. Uh, Amy Sharp uh, had been amazing in the late 80s and, and 90s, and and I was a big buyer of of Emmy Sharp, um, um, but for some reason that kind of tailed off. Uh, Harasovitz in Germany also emerged in the early 2000s, but somehow that I I never really felt that series was working. I did publish with them uh, the once, so um, uh, so we decided to give it a try, and and I think even when Michael and I first met in 2013. Uh, I think we still weren't really sure how it was going to develop. It was still really early, an er, early uh, situation, um, and the books we were publishing were still kind, of, I think, hit and miss. But uh, since then, I think the field has really kind of um, uh, developed really quite uh, rapidly. 
Uh, we're getting a large numbers of, of um, proposals these days. Um, in terms of readership, um, uh, I think we try to be quite broad in what we cover. So a little bit different from the Sinophone series that, that Nikki lo looks after. Um, in other words, we, we are covering both social science and humanities. But I think a lot of what we try to publish is things that we can use for teaching. I think that is one of the things that we keep in uh, keep in mind because we teach Taiwan at SOAS and there's a growing number of Taiwan studies uh, courses being established in Europe, North America. But I think also in Taiwan, you have a growing number of uh, English language uh, taught uh, programs, courses, degrees. So we feel that that is a, um, a market. Um, I have to mention that there are some big challenges that I feel that that um, uh, I have in the series that I, that I uh, manage. Um, one of them is the, the, the price of our books. Um, and I think um, uh, because we are mainly targeting libraries um, uh, with the, the hardbacks, and it's something that really drives me uh, crazy. I often have arguments with my um, uh, with my editors at, at, at Rowlett, trying to to convince them that this will sell enough copies to be viable in in paperback. But I think um, eBooks, I think, have helped a lot, and I do see. Uh, the gradual rise in the sales of ebooks, particularly I've noticed um, in the sales for the COVID year, that uh, the um, the balance between the three, we're roughly about a third paperback, a third hardback, and third uh, ebook um, uh, now, which I think does, um, but it means that so many of our sales actually are still paperback, that um, and the hardbacks for libraries have really gone down. Because libraries are moving towards um, um, uh, ebooks. Um, and the other thing I have to say that I really uh, feel a bit frustrated about in 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 my work is about the covers. Uh, and and there, I think both of your series definitely have a big advantage over us that we are quite restrictive, at least in our hardbacks. They won't they don't encourage us to do kind of imaginative um, uh, covers. Um, OK, so that's basically where we are, but I think it's a really exciting time. We've, we've published 38 books now over our uh, 12 uh, years. Um, and I know um, at Camfer, the number of books, but I think I've heard Michael talking about the numbers. They're really astounding. Um, and again, I think this also shows um, what can be done with a few enthusiastic people. Um, uh, behind the projects. I, I know that Michael spends uh, so much time on each uh, each volume um, and I'm a little bit lucky that I do have that kind of technical um, uh, support. But what I would like to move on to next then is the question about uh, what we look for in proposals um, and uh, the practical side in terms of how people can publish with uh, our series. In other words, um, what should they do um, uh, uh, first? Um, maybe, Michael, would you like to go first? Because I can imagine that you have a slightly different system for different types of books. Sure, yeah, we do. Um, so generally, we maintain a pretty open policy to submissions. Um, our the, the general idea is if it's interesting and it's about Taiwan, uh, you know, we're, we're, we're going to talk to you. Mm -hmm. um, I think because of the nature of us um, vis-a-vis the more academic presses, uh, if you are looking for the, the the cachet of publishing with a big name um, in a in an established series, then that's where you're going to go. I think what we pick up is uh, the books that maybe don't quite fit into a defined mm. category or are, are are kind of cross disciplinary in some way um, that are uh, maybe a little bit outside the mainstream but still uh, interesting. So I'll give you a couple examples of that. Um, we've got one coming up um, by James X Morris. Um, he's uh, based at uh, Academia Seneca and he is um, researching uh, funeral culture um, in Taiwan, particularly the built environments so graveyards. And looking in particular at one uh, graveyard that he did an extended study on and how that was basically being um, dismantled and destroyed for development um, and trying to sort of work with grassroots organizations to save as much as that as possible. So it's it's in that interesting space where this that he is an academic um, and it comes from a uh, um, that sort of viewpoint. It's um, heavily referenced, footnoted, um, but at the same time, there is an activist part of the book 
um, he himself is involved in trying to preserve this culture. Um, so it's it, it, it's not a disinterested um, view of the of the situation. So it, that might be something that doesn't fit with the traditional academic press, but but we love and we'd be uh, you know delighted to take something like that on. Um, I think uh, also there are there are um, subjects that academic presses might not be so interested in that that are synthesis uh, ideas of you know but rather than looking for novelty in a very um, uh, tightly defined area, um, we are interested in in sort of bringing together a synthesis of concepts of understandings to present um, an overview of something uh, rather than a, a deep dive a lot of the time. So a good example of that is we've got um, an edited volume on uh, the LGBT movement in Taiwan um, going back to the 1960s, uh, interviews with lots of the people involved um, and chapters uh, selected from, from different writers. And that will go through sort of underground days, um, connections with um, movements in the States and in Japan, and then through to uh, um, equal marriage uh, laws that, that happened a couple of years ago and uh, covering that side of things. So it, it, the idea with that is each of those chapters could probably be a book in an academic press, um, but we're looking for something that, that provides an overview and, and actually kind of a handbook um, for other uh, LGBT movements in Asia to look at and say, OK, well, this is how Taiwan did it. This is how the civil movement came together. This is how they dealt with the media. This is how they dealt with government figures and so on. Um, and, and to use that to sort of develop uh, an approach that's going to work in their country. So looking at places like um, Singapore, Malaysia, Japan, uh, Korea, where they're in, in Taiwan, in some cases not far behind. Um, but there are there are definitely lessons there to be drawn. So I think that activist uh, side of things um, which, which maybe doesn't quite fit with an academic um, press where there's a bit of campaigning involved. We have a definite viewpoint and we are um, we, we're pushing that viewpoint. Um, so, so that's something that's interesting to us. Um, but in general, uh, we, we're very open. So, yeah, like I said, if it's about Taiwan and it's interesting to the three of us who are behind Camp for Press, uh, we're going to take it on. We don't really um, consider the commercial side too much, so that's the main criteria. Is it good? Is it interesting? Yes. OK, we'll take it. And in terms of the proposal, uh, what do you mm. normally, because um, um, uh, I, I know, we, for example, with academic presses, we have a kind of a, a, a standard format, about yes. three to four pages. Is that, do you, um, um, yeah, is that so what you're looking we, for? Well, I mean, academics tend to submit in that format because it's what they're okay. used to, um, to us, so we're, we're quite happy with that. Um, uh, some of our books have started uh, as a conversation. Um, mm -hmm. uh, one in particular, I uh, was in a tea house with uh, um, T.C. Lin uh, talking about his book and uh, or talking about his uh, book in Mandarin, which came out first. Um, and really, he uh, just kind of dumped the manuscript on me. Um, at that point, um, yeah, read the thing, loved it, needed a bit of work uh, and took it on from there. So um, if you want to submit in an academic format, we're, we're delighted with that. Generally, what we look for is um, at least a couple of completed chapters, a uh, synopsis of the book um, and uh, a, a chapter list. And also we, we like to have some idea of um, where the author sees the book among the, the other books in the area. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I'm massively in favour of, um, uh, of of well-read authors, of understanding your 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 situation that you're in. We've had books pitched pitched to us uh, quite often that are, hey, I'm going to write something about topic X, when they don't really understand the literature that's already out there. Mm. Um, so demonstrating an understanding of what is out there and how your book fits in with that, um, that's that's really crucial for us because we're not putting out books for the sake of it. We are um, looking to add to uh, the, to the whole field. And I can see some similarities there. I mean, I really like this idea about um, uh, it starting as a conversation because often at academic conferences, um, yeah. one of the things that I'm 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 looking for is that idea. 
and then look at the next stage for me then is that the three to four page uh, proposal um, um, and we I guess we're thinking about as I think as you say where does this fit within that um, existing works uh, is it going to kind of build on those so even right. I think that's something that applies across both academic and non-academic um, uh, publications but I would say that um, we probably do put a fair amount of stress on the on the commercial side because I have seen cases yeah. where uh, academically the, the project looks great but we're not sure it's going to sell particularly to to libraries and again that's another one of our um, uh, constraints um, I would say that actually in terms of the uh, review process um, normally we reject mostly at that at that proposal stage mm. um, and um, uh, we are much more less likely to reject post review. Generally, if, if we really like yeah. a project, then we will send it to review uh, because we believe it's going to pass review. Um, although it doesn't, that doesn't always um, uh, happen. Um, we have had kind of gr a growing number of um, post review rejections, but it's mm -hmm. not what we're we're um, uh, we're looking uh, for. So there's, there are a number of things that. Um, um, that we're kind of looking for in those proposals. The academic yeah. quality, originality, commercial, will it sell, uh, will it pass um, uh, review? H how about Nikki, could you talk a little bit about um, what you're looking for in the proposal and also how you um, uh, assess the proposal and uh, whether you go through review as well? OK. Um... OK, basically for the uh, uh, book series of sign up on and Taiwan studies, it's um, because this is academic and so and also, well, um, it's, it's mainly focused on the Taiwan studies. So uh, uh, anything, anything about, you know, any, any humanity study, humanist study uh, related to Taiwan are welcome. So um, so yeah, and and yeah, of course we uh, also because the Sinophone, uh, because the Sinophone in, ter uh, in terms of studies uh, focus more on the uh, complex uh, uh, relationship between the local and the global. So we kind of particularly welcome any proposal that deal with uh, the issues of the like identity or the multiculturalism, colonialism, post colonialism, everything. But uh, we, we basically welcome all the um, uh, uh, topics. So um, and 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 about the um, maybe I talk about a little bit about the um, uh, review. Um, so uh, we have, you know, for the sign up on the end time study, we have the book form. So anyone who want to apply, who uh, who anyone who want to publish uh, publish the book, uh, can send us the uh, just write and and uh, send us the book form. And so uh, once we receive the uh, the proposal, uh, the book form, you know, proposal uh, uh, proposal for uh, for book. And once once we receive the proposal, then it will be reviewed. First, by uh, the um, the board of uh, uh, editors, and who will give uh, some uh, recommendation, and um, and and then uh, submit it to uh, Springer Nature, and um, and also the Springer Nature will you know just uh, review uh, uh, to see uh, if if it's, you know uh, uh, fits their uh, requirements and uh, if it's like academic, and and then. Uh, uh, and then if if uh, a Springer you know uh, approves approve it, then uh, a Springer will directly sign a contract with uh, the the authors, and and so uh, then once the book is done, then it will be uh, like a further more forward with the peer review, and then uh, go into the uh, like the at uh, editing and then go into a publication. So this is the whole uh, like a process. And and I, one thing I, I, I would like to mention is um, because uh, because the Springer Nature is a pretty well established uh, uh, academic press with lots of offices and, and staff all over the world. So they um, they tend to move things really quickly. So it's so like if the author, you know, like uh, laid in handing in the manuscript, 
they will keep you know sending the sending the uh, reminders just speed thing up because they're very quick. So it's like because our book series are only two years, but we already you know, have a full book. So they are really quick. They are really quick about that. Yes. Yeah, I mean, I think you're right that that's uh, technically that is one advantage of working with uh, the, with big publishers that, that they will deal with certain things such as um, uh, chasing the reviewers, um, uh, arranging the kind of production, which I my sense is that, Michael, that's something that you probably have to um, put in a bit more time in terms of things like uh, uh, you're probably a little bit more hands on in the. Um, yes. Uh, yeah, certainly, certainly so. Um, I think in fact we're I'm kind of scaling back um, at the moment in terms of the new books that we're taking on uh, just because um, you know overworked all three of us are overworked um, and uh, but but I think it's yeah for us the advantage is that with all the technology that's around nowadays you can do all of this in-house if you want to if you're prepared to to learn um, the skills that go into Photoshop into the desktop publishing software um, into the commercial side so you know I did an accounting course before I did this and all, all that kind of thing um, th then it is possible to to sort of uh, be a jack of all trades and and cover lots of bases um, but yes we for the most part it's the three of us um, in-house for almost everything um, we occasionally uh, contract out some covers um, and we occasionally use uh, third parties for for copy editing particularly if we're pressed for time but everything else is the three of us. And um, I can see that uh, BU has raised the question about um, promotion, which was one of the things we did plan to yeah. um, uh, to talk about. Um, um, I mean, if we compare to when Michael and I first started, the kind of tools for promotion are much more uh, diverse. Um, yeah. But one of the, the question marks that I always have, and I don't know whether how Michael feels about it, is what really works um, mm. uh, I'm 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 never really sure. But I'm um, I wonder whether uh, Michael, you wanted to comment first on um, your kind of strategies for promotion and sure um, because there's so many out there and yeah. you, we could um, spend so much time on them. Yes, yeah. I mean, I, I think probably our target market is a little bit different. Um, so you mentioned pricing earlier on. That's one of our mm. um, big uh, pushes. Is that we our most expensive hardback is $45 US um, and uh, generally our paperbacks are under $20. Um, in fact, yeah, almost all under $20. So uh, we are looking at uh, the general reader. We're trying to make these books as widely accessible as possible um, and ebooks are, are all under $10. Um, so they, they really are um, very cheap uh, by by the standards of of the industry uh, that enables a few different promotional approaches for us which maybe aren't open to academic presses um, so actually the number one way we sell books uh, is through our newsletter um, so our newsletter subscribers uh, are great customers of ours we also um, use the newsletter to give them uh, sneak peeks they can buy books ahead of time they can get discounts and so on. So uh, we do treat our newsletter subscribers differently to everybody else that we deal with, every other promotional channel. They get a better deal. Um, and they also get some original writing and, and, and other things to, to keep them interested. So it's not, it's not a selling proposition, but we do sell books through it. Um, outside of that, um, there are, uh, particularly when it comes to Taiwan, um, Actually, the Facebook group, there's a Facebook group of um, uh, I think it's called Taiwan Book Nerds or something like that. Um, uh, Taiwan Books Nerdery and Discussion. I can't remember the, the exact title, but th there's about a thousand people in there and uh, that community is incredibly supportive, um, although they do moan about prices, as, as David will know. <laughs> but uh, more for more for me than you. Yes. Yeah. Um, <laughs> But, but those guys are incredibly supportive and we do get um, quite a lot of sales through them. Uh, we also um, have quite a lot of luck with Taiwan based publications um, who review the books. So Taipei Times um, being an obvious one, but also the newer 
um, outlets like Newslens and uh, Ketagallon Media and New Bloom and so on. Um, those guys are incredibly supportive and uh, uh, we will always get a few reviews for Taiwan books in those publications. Um, so those those three channels are probably the best. Um, it, in terms of sort of accidental sales, we actually do quite a lot through Twitter um, and mostly through my account rather than the corporate account. Um, so I talk a lot about Taiwan and I am um, I'm not very uh, controlled or professional about it. Um, it, it. It's sort of heartfelt. It's what I feel um, about most things. Um, and I swear from time to time and I uh, talk about other football and other things as well. But generally sort of an approachable voice is what I try to be um, about Taiwan. And I don't talk about our books a great deal. Um, mostly I'm talking about other things in Taiwan, history and, uh, and politics and so on that I'm interested in. Uh, but that does serve as a route for some people to to access the books. So social media, um, although it can be uh, a distraction, uh, certainly, and it can be can be a lot of work, um, ha has proven very useful for us. What hasn't proven so useful is the traditional channels. So journal reviews mm, occasionally sell a few books, but as David said earlier, uh, library sales are way down. Um, and we never really did that many library sales anyway. Hardbacks are about 7% of our business. Um, so we only started doing them because we thought we might sell a few into libraries, um, but they're not they're not a huge volume um, and we wouldn't really miss them if they're gone. I mean, we're, we're going to keep doing them, but uh, but that's not a big market for us. So I would say the yeah newsletter, social media and then um, uh, reviews um, in, in, in sort of trusted, widely read publications, local publications tend to do the job for us. Yeah, I mean, because we were talking about uh, uh, Taiwan Studies blogs in the earlier session. I think that that is, an, again, is an area that has really expanded um, uh, quite rapidly. So I know we've we've particularly um, been keen on getting reviewed with New Bloom, Taipei Times. Um, um, I'm not sure whether we've done Kedagalan uh, Media yet, or, but I think you're right that that's, uh, and I think the fact is that the a lot of those platforms actually care about the field of Taiwan studies, and, and I think that um, that helps. While um, the academic journal reviews, um, they they can be quite slow. That that is um, uh, one challenge we have, um, and um, it's it's a difficult balance. You can you can be quite proactive with them, uh, but they're not necessarily um, uh, playing ball there. And I think the 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 uh, the speed is an issue. Um, I would also agree that the pricing is 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 one thing that I think does um, uh, give uh, you an advantage. I really like the way you're uh, you're dealing with uh, with that uh, with that area. I suppose the, for academic uh, publications, the, the the other thing that we do a lot of is uh, book talks, um, and uh, I mean particularly for the my my new book, I've just gone book talk crazy. The the other uh, potential site has been podcasts. Um, which I had again, I hadn't done before uh, this book, but actually I found uh, they're really kind of uh, useful uh, platforms because of that kind of interactive um, uh, nature. Um, and again, that is a relatively new uh, area in in the kind of Taiwan studies um, uh, a field. But again, I feel yeah. it can be quite frustrating that the let's say because we're me and Nikki are with a kind of an academic press. Um, it's often not so flexible on those kind of things. Like the website mm. is very bland. Um, yes. It's not something that we can adjust in the way that perhaps you can. Um, I, I was wondering whether Nikki, you wanted to comment um, on um, uh, your experience of, of promotion. Yes, um, I do this is pretty new, you know, both of the uh, two uh, book, uh, uh, book series are, you know, just come up last year. Um, Actually, it's like, um, it's like, for example, the um, the Taiwan literature uh, book series. Um, yes, um, last year we have three uh, books that uh, we wanted to actually plan um, to to have some book talk or book launch, you know, everywhere. But but because of pandemic, so uh, we, we couldn't do it. And also this year, you know, the, because Taiwan, you know, just have suddenly like a breakout, uh, broke out, you know, the uh, the pandemic. And so uh, everything, you know, stop. So I really feel um, like a, a little bit like a pity that I still, you know, 
from last year and to now, I uh, do not have any opportunity to uh, promote. This is probably the this is the first time you know to talk about uh, the book series. So I'm really happy today, you know, to have this opportunity. And um, yeah, and 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 and. And the uh, Springer Nature, yes, um, yeah, I think the, um, the the books are so expensive. It's it's really expensive. But um, like uh, Springer Nature, our sign of in Taiwan study book series, we um, okay. First of all, because the uh, Springer had a pretty large uh, like a footprint in the you know publishing world, and so I think it can you know get uh, attention easily. Like it, it can, you know, have a, like uh, it can reach the readers and and but um, and also yes, our book has the uh, the print edition, you know, as well as the ebook, and so it's like if, if if the reader, if you if you only if you were only interested in one chapter, then you don't need to buy the whole book. It's only you know just you just need to purchase and download the individual uh, chapter. And of course, this is uh, cheaper, but still not that cheap. Yeah, so this is one thing. And so um, for this book series, uh, San Juan and Taiwan City, of course, is uh, uh, all promoted uh, by uh, Springer Nature. And they have a website and they also have their uh, distribution. They have their way you know, to, to promote, promote their uh, uh, book series. So we don't get uh, too much involved. And and then for the Cam uh, for the Canberra the Taiwan uh, literature yet yeah, as I mentioned that uh, we we still didn't have a chance to promote it but uh, we do have a project this year to organize the um, reading uh, reading workshop to uh, this is also uh, sponsored by the uh, National Museum of Ta Taiwan Literature. Uh, in order to promote uh, the six books we published, and we um, we are planning to uh, organize uh, the 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 reading uh, workshop in you know basically is outside of uh, Taiwan. So yeah, we will cooperate. So if you know the audience, if you are interested, in, you know to to have like one hour or two hours, you know read our books then you're welcome and you can contact me and mm -hmm. we can provide you know some um uh, some you know funds a little funds to buy books or mm -hmm. for buy drink you know to mm -hmm. like for uh, like you know student or a friend and they get together and to read the books yes but I, I have to say that the I think events really do help in my experience. I think that one of the reasons why uh, Routledge like my series is because me and my team work so hard on running uh, uh, book events and I think this was also proved when when Michael came to SOAS for um, uh, the uh, uh, let, me, let me get the um, this um, uh, the book uh, Lord of Formosa by Joyce Bergfeldt and this um, this is one of our best selling ever book launch uh, events so it's a really kind of um, uh, memorable and I think also I would suggest um, don't rely too much on uh, Springer or um, I think that the these mainstream publishers have too many publications um, and they they they'll, they'll do something for us but not too much so I think we really need to do um, a, a lot of uh, work and the other kind of follow-up thing I think to Nikki's points is I think for me and I don't know whether Michael agrees I uh, in a way the pandemic helped us because it kind of made us become more imaginative in the, the way we uh, promote um, uh, our books and maybe the, I feel I'm trying things in terms of promotion that I hadn't done in the past. Um, I don't know whether Michael you how, how you feel on this. Yeah, definitely. And I also think that um, audiences are more receptive to online events now. Um, we've all been forced uh, into a, a Zoom world and uh, yeah, so if you are organizing something, then people are much more willing to, to, to put it in their calendar and actually show up. Um, the, the event you're talking about we did at, at SOAS with Joyce's book was fantastic um, and I, I really look forward to being able to do those kind of events again um, but in the meantime during the pandemic what it has shown us is that uh, you can have something like we're doing today and there'll be people here um, from Taiwan from the States um, and in the UK uh, and just uh, you can reach a, a different audience than you can if you're, you're, you're locked in one geographical location I think especially for, for us as, as I'm in the UK, 
Um, I'm also not in London, so I'm not I'm not central. Um, and uh, my, my two partners are in Taiwan. The sort of uh, organizing logistics around events um, can be a little bit tricky. Um, so that that sort of gift of being able to go online, do things online uh, has been huge for us. I think also, um, like you said, the shift to ebooks um, has been was more pronounced during the pandemic, um, especially last summer. Uh, we saw that that percentage shifting and uh, we had um, June, July, August, we were overall over those three months, we were 110% up um, total sales against the year before. Similar number of books released, but um, people bought loads of books last summer. Um, and, and in some ways that's um, that has tailed off a little bit, but levels are still far above where they were. So it's really helped us um, the kind of uh, uh, both the willingness to, to, to read ebooks and, and also the fact that people are willing to to attend events online. So it's been great for us. And I, OK, I see we have a question here from uh, one of our SOAS alumni, uh, Raymond, and he was asking, um, have you ever, have you ever met PRC uh, authors at conferences that have covered the same uh, topics? I'm guessing most PRC Taiwan Studies authors write from a government uh, perspective. Um, and this kind of links in with a question that I've also heard at times asking um, uh, whether we would publish um, um, uh, kind of a PRC uh, Taiwan uh, authors. Um, mm, would would that be an, an, an issue uh, uh, for us? Um, I mean, I have to say that um, uh, at least in, 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 in my case, I've never received a book proposal from a PRC based um, uh, academic, although we probably have published some uh, book chapters within edited uh, volumes. Um, uh, maybe a, um, a more likely scenario is, is getting um, public, getting proposals from PRC scholars who are based abroad. But even there, I, th I would say the numbers are not um, uh, uh, huge. I, I don't know whether either of you had any thoughts on, on Raymond's question. Uh, yeah, so we've had one book proposal from um, somebody based in the PRC uh, on a Taiwan studies uh, topic. Uh, it was uh, about about what a Taiwan province of the PRC would look like um, wow. in, term, in, in an organizational sense, so administrative sense. Um, sort of uh, a one country, two systems um, uh, basis and then saying, well, how are they going to run individual cities and, and counties and so on? Um, my, my thoughts on doing something like that, in this case, the book wasn't very good, um, so the decision was kind of made easy. Uh, but but my, my feelings on doing it are that um, I'm not a neutral when it comes to Taiwan and Taiwan's future status, um, and, and I think uh, taking on a book by a PRC based scholar who will obviously have to cleave fairly close to the party narrative. I, I'm not sure what that adds to the conversation um, if it is just going to follow a hard party line. Uh, much more interesting to me are our academics outside PRC academics outside of China who have more freedom to speak. Um, so I wouldn't rule something like that out, um, but but I would be skeptical going into it um, because my my aim in this is is really to, to to kind of promote a broader understanding of Taiwan. Um, and I think if you are cleaving very close to 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 the kind of orthodoxy that the PRC um, repeats, then I'm not sure where the value is. Yeah, I mean, in my case, I've I've uh, I think I've had some discussions with PRC based uh, Taiwan studies um, uh, scholars, but it's never really gone beyond those kind of um, uh, initial conversations. We've we've talked about ideas. For example, I think one interesting idea was to was to have a a book on uh, the PRC's Taiwan policy. So an analysis rather than a, a kind of a, um, or maybe it would be interesting to look at something that looks at the uh, Taiwan Studies centers and programs um, uh, in uh, in China. But again, none of them have really uh, materialized yet. I, I don't know whether uh, Nikki, you had any thoughts on this question. Um, we haven't received any like a proposal from the uh, scholar like a PRC base or a perspective, but um, well, I, I think basically um, 
it's, it's welcome, of course, you know, like um, uh, maybe in the future you will receive this. Uh, and, and of course, because uh, this this is about Taiwan study. So we want, you know, like uh, at least it is, you know, the research is from really in, from Taiwan, you know, it's not just like under shadow of the uh, like a Chinese uh, framework and just take Taiwan as a periphery or or, or something like that. We want, you know, like uh, Taiwan is in, in the center of, of the uh, research. So uh, basically we want, you know, this is our uh, standpoint. And but of course, if in the future we can uh, receive like a more like a different view, you know, to look at Taiwan and 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 you know, in different perspective, I think that is uh, also welcome. Yes, but uh, I don't know if 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 the scholars, you know, is from made in China, then maybe it's not safe for them because because it's a Stanford study, you know, it's based on the uh, Professor Shishume's, uh, uh, uh theory about, you know, because it doesn't include he, because his theory, uh, her theory doesn't include the uh, men in China, you know, in uh, his theories more look at the uh, outside of uh, men in China. And mm -hmm. so, well, I, I don't know, but uh, I, I, I will see. We will see. Yes. And um, we we kind of touched upon uh, BU's question, but BU, did you want to come in, come back? Because uh, we only touched upon part of your question. No, I'm fine. You guys are really knowledgeable. Thank you very much. Because you also touched upon the the uh, uh, the readership element. Uh, yes, because I I I think uh, in the early years when we were trying to approach uh, different uh, publishers is uh, when you don't have a dedicated Taiwan studies, it, it's a little bit hit and miss. And uh, uh, it really depends on the editor's uh, personal viewpoint and positions. So I think um, having that as a home is, is quite nice to be able to belong. But what do you guys think? Um, would there be um, Will there be a danger of immerse yourself in the ch uh, uh, echo chamber? And uh, I'm just asking, you know, whether we become like we only we can only be published in Taiwan Studies uh, uh, series. So just throw in the ideas. Yeah. Did anyone want to um, respond, Mike? Uh, uh, jump in on that a little bit on the echo chamber thing. Um, yeah, I, I think about this quite a lot. I mean, when we it's a slightly different um, thing to what, what Biu was just saying, but the, the write, writing about Taiwan uh, from a non-academic perspective tends to be, uh, we, we get many more proposals from people who are on the green political side of the spectrum. Um, so looking for voices from Taiwan who are um, challenging that narrative uh, it, it's tricky in English. Um, there aren't many voices out there that are uh, sort of vociferously defending an ROC, KMT orthodoxy um, for Taiwan. Uh, and, and those voices that are out there, I don't think are, are doing a great job of communicating that. So that's something I'm very wary of that, um, particularly when, it, when we, we talk about the White Terror era um, and uh, you are getting uh, you're getting one side of history. Um, now, that doesn't mean that uh, we we want sort of uh, an unopposed um, narrative from the other side either. But uh, but I am wary that certain voices are, t are driven towards talking about Taiwan, and those voices um, often have a political viewpoint on the green side of the spectrum. Uh, and, and so I think we are, we need to be careful to to balance that out where we can. Uh, but it's difficult if the authors are not out there and not not contacting us. Um, yeah, it's tricky. And, and Nikki? Mm, well, I have no idea <laughs> yet about this. Yeah, so uh, maybe I just skip this and yeah. But it, it was actually something that uh, we did touch upon on Monday. We had a session about writing books on green parties. And one of the things that came up in our discussion was 
uh, how do we actually reach different types of uh, of readership? Um, uh, so we have a readership, for example, for um, our, our own country's politics, uh, and then can we catch, for example, the that discipline uh, in terms of, let's say, the study of small parties? Can we catch uh, Green Party supporters internationally? Uh, can we? Uh, so I think one of the key things here is making sure we connect with uh, different potential uh, readerships. Uh, and I can imagine that, that with something like literature, that does give you a lot of um, a potential, particularly when you do literature in a comparative um, uh, way. So I think that's, um, uh, I think, uh, I think BU is right that we need to kind of think beyond uh, Taiwan studies. I think in the way that we, we mark it, but I think having that, that home can be really nice for authors um, because they know that their work is going to be uh, valued. Mm. Um, but I think it, to, a, to a certain extent, uh, there's a bit of, um, I think both the authors and also the, the series editors also have to be a bit imaginative in terms of the way that we um, brand different books for different. I think it's the same also with events as well. In theory, uh, we should do events that reach out to uh, kind of different uh, country interests, different themes um, and I think if again we can't just rely on our uh, mainstream publishers to do that work for uh, for us um, and I suppose uh, just kind of bringing BU back in there because uh, BU has also edited uh, a number of uh, of books I wondered whether you wanted to comment on your experience of hitting that readership you put me in a very difficult position but <laughs> Thank you. Um, uh, I have to say uh, I admire uh, all the, um, especially you guys have to deal with so much uh, things, um, you know, covering and dealing with probably difficult people as well. Uh, as the ed editor of individuals, you know, single uh, volumes, it's not, it is problematic, but not as bad as you guys are facing. So I congratulate you. But I do want to come in uh, because I have to say, although I question you guys, but at the same time, I just want to uh, take one example. Um, when I wanted to pu publish my mono monograph uh, in 2000, oh, I can't believe how long ago that was. And I approached a major, major uh, publisher. I waited for 10 months and there's no reply and I say, think then I call uh, this person's on holiday so I said okay David can I uh, submit to to uh, the Taiwan series and all the time I'm sure all the Taiwan series uh, editors is always efficient and very helpful going through very quickly so one year later the chief editor of that publisher called me and said Oh, we would like to publish your. I thought, what? What happened to that one and a half years gone? So actually, I think how quickly you deal with a manuscript is also a, a very important element in the success, I'm sure. Although I have to say that um, uh, one big challenge we do have, though, is finding people to review books. Um, it, um, it's becoming more and more difficult, maybe because of the way that academics are so pressed for time. Uh, it, um, that is one of the reasons why we, we are pretty confident with a proposal or a manuscript before we actually send it to um, a review, because um, um, it, often it becomes senior academics, maybe who are close to retirement, who have a bit more time, or maybe junior uh, academics, but it, it is a real kind of um, uh, nightmare. Um, I see we have a um, uh, another follow up question from uh, Raymond. So here Raymond asks, um, have you considered submitting books to Amazon or positioning on the web to gain rankings? That's to say, uh, if you come high in Google or Amazon searches, uh, you'll get more sales. Um, uh, I can see Michael, you're nodding. Would you like to respond there? Yeah, I think for, for, for series editors, this is probably out of your hands. Um, but as somebody who runs a publishing company, this is um, something that I do cover. Uh, so if I am I able to share my screen on here, I think so. Um, yes, I am. 
sorry, bear with me a moment. Uh, but uh, all of our books are on Amazon, so that's a major route of, of sales for us. Um, but also, uh, I, I do pay attention to um, search engine optimization, so I do want our books to rank as highly as possible, and I do spend spend time on that. Um, uh, will not be able to record the contents of your screen till it's quit. Right, I'm not going to do that because it will close down the app, um, so I can't show you. But if you um, if you do a Google search for uh, books about Taiwan, um, then you'll find us at number three uh, in the rankings. If you do a Google search for just Taiwan books, um, you'll get a list um, right before anything else of, of books about Taiwan with cover images. Um, and the, the, the books in there change, but generally our books rank uh, pretty highly, so I can see if I did search for Taiwan books on Google right now, uh, of the first sort of 10 books, there's Formosa Betrayed is ours, Taiwan and 100 Books is ours, Formosa and Odyssey is ours, and A Pail of Oysters is ours. So um, that's kind of a, a result of um, spending the time on the search engine optimization and, and really trying to, uh, to think about what people are looking for when they look for a Taiwan book. So uh, trying to put yourself in the mind of the of the reader and say, OK, what are the things that I'm, you know, am I looking for? Is white terror the first word that's going to come to my head or is it, am I going to be thinking about martial law or am I going to be thinking about uh, political prisoners or if you're de dealing with a book in that subject? So it, it's considering all of those um, things that people might be looking for and then you still have to write like a human um, when you're when you're writing about these books. Uh, you don't want to come across as some computer generated nonsense, but it is uh, slipping in the right words to make sure that you you rank well and paying attention to little details on the page like uh, the metadata and so on. So that that's proven very fruitful for us, particularly that that page that we have on our website, which is books about Taiwan. That, that ranks highly in Google and we get a lot of click throughs and sales from that. So yes, it is something we pay attention to. So, so is a lot of that down to the uh, the book's blurb or the book's title that's that's key yes. there? Yes. Um, so I I don't really consider search op, uh, search engine optimization from a title point of view. Occasionally, from a subtitle point of view, particularly if you have something um, more poetic as the title, um, then you might have a prosaic subtitle. Uh, you, you get this a lot in academic books as well. Um, so you might have a book called Chasing the Dream and then it will be called, uh, you know, the imaginary in Taiwan novel uh, novels of the 20th century, a very prosaic subtitle. Those things are loaded for SEO. Um, and then the, the blurb that you have about the book, yes, you would slip in the right the right keywords to make sure that it gets ranked. Um, but also it's about people linking into your site. So the more people are sharing your content, the more um, links that you have in from elsewhere, so from from um, discussion sites, from bulletin boards, from reviews, that all uh, boosts your Google ranking a little bit. So yeah, it's something that's if you have control over it, it's really worth considering. Um, you have some control, I guess, as ed series editors when it comes to book blurbs. Um, so there are some there are some good tools for helping with that. It's probably not the forum to go into those um, at the moment, but uh, if anybody's interested, I can I can sort of share um, what I've learned about that. Yeah, uh, Nikki, did you have any thoughts on on this? <laughs> so much to learn. Yeah, I, I really have no experience about you know how to promote or how to like how how to make it look better. You know, like on the uh, like, like Amazon or you know how to rate this. Really, this is a totally uh, new thing for me. And yeah, of course, like uh, my my two uh, book series, the the audience, you know, the reader is totally different. And like. Uh, um, uh, Center one and Taiwan study, of course, is more for academic, and and so, um, yeah, indeed, I, I never thought like um, how to promote it or uh, uh, how to make it, you know, sell well in the market. So it's it's uh, really never uh, come to my mind. But uh, well, I think, but um, I think for you know just just for promoting like a Taiwan study, I think it was to um, you know to to really uh, the, 
try to make uh, like, you know, even it is the academic uh, book series, but I think it's always to, you know, uh, try to reach a more uh, audience. I think it's, uh, it's also good for promoting uh, the Taiwan studies and, 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 and yes, and also uh, for the, um, uh, the, the literature book series, well, I, I don't know. Of course, we are selling also on, you know, not only on the Cambria Press uh, website and also on the Amazon. And so, but uh, um, I, I don't know yet. I don't know yet how good uh, it is sold. And so, yeah, there's a lot of things to learn. And well, I don't know because I'm just, you know, I'm just a teacher, a professor at a university. So, um, yeah, but I think it's just very interesting. And uh, yeah, so well, I can learn really a lot from you guys and, and I hope I can uh, promote uh, the, the the series. But yeah, I, I do think, you know, mm, how to say, um, you know, even I think for the Taiwan studies, even in, in Taiwan, you know, inside Taiwan, I'm, I'm as a member of the uh, Taiwan, uh, the Department of Taiwan Studies, uh, very often asked by people like, what exactly you guys are doing? Why? What well, is <laughs> Taiwan study was just researching or, or is it, what, what, what is it all about? So it's like even in Taiwan, you know, people don't know what um, Taiwan study is. And also uh, they are confused. Like, what do, do Taiwan have literature? You know, it's something like that. So, yeah. So, in, even you know, it's somehow it's already uh, difficult to uh, persuade you know or 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 tell uh, Taiwanese people that yes, yeah, so we have you know the the, the Taiwanese the brilliance is fantastic, and so yeah, still a lot of thing to learn. And well, but I I did you know hear uh, a student told me that. Um, 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 okay, the reason why they come to Taiwan to study, you know, to uh, to 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 come to, to study Taiwan literature is simply because just one day he uh, went to the bookstore and, and and so he said, oh wow, the uh, the the Er Yu Shou Ji, you know, this is a a, a a a novel, a diary, and and so he started interested because he totally has no any background. He doesn't have any, she doesn't have any knowledge about Taiwan, but just simply because uh, this book, this novel, uh, uh, because she read this novel, so she, she you know, trigger her, you know, the, the, the kind of uh, interest. And so that's why she, she come all the way to Taiwan and fall in love with Taiwan. <laughs> so, yeah, so, well, yes, I, I really have to learn uh, more like how to promote the books. But I think your, your point, uh, links us into something that we haven't somehow talked about yet today and that's about bookstores and whether they still um, uh, matter because again um, one of the things I find really difficult is okay we have so many really good books and quite a lot in paperback now um, uh, but um, usually only one or two of them are available in bookstores uh, in Taiwan while there's normally um, uh, a lot of books on China uh, but I can imagine if I was a tourist going to to Taiwan, or even being at the airport in uh, in Taiwan, you'd want to get some um, uh, some books on on Taiwan. Um, and and I know that Michael, you, you've had some success of uh, maybe a little bit more success of maybe getting your books into independent bookstores in in Taiwan. So I was wondering whether you could comment on 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 that. Uh, I mean, we have in a small way. It, it's still a frustrating exercise um, for us. One of the difficulties with bookshops is um, it, it's kind of a an unusual model in that books are always um, returnable. Mm. So a bookshop can take your books um, and two years later they can decide, OK, it hasn't sold and they can send it back and they, they owe you nothing. So um, it, it changes your business model if uh, if you have to uh, account for sending out hundreds of books. Um, that you may sell, you may get back. When you get them back, they might not be in a resaleable condition and so on. So there are some uh, there are some considerations there. Um, also, there is uh, a kind of uh, hesitancy that I've come across. There's a there's a, a lack of belief that Taiwan is interesting in English, um, even inside Taiwan. Uh, so I this is a while ago now, maybe four four years ago, I was talking to the English buyer at Esleet, Um Temping in, in in Taiwan, and uh, she said, you know, people aren't interested in Taiwan books in English. Um, and, uh, and at that point, I wasn't I wasn't, um, you know, I was talking about Camphor Press, but I I was mostly saying, 
we need Taiwan books. Uh, it's not just about books that I've done, but there are so many great books out there. I mean, I, I read a ridiculous amount of Taiwan, that that whole uh, thing back there is Taiwan books, and and there are so many out there that can be um, ben of benefit to to people, but the uh, you're you're dealing with a very few gatekeepers. That's the issue, and if they're not um, interested, then you're you're not going anywhere. So where we have had some success is dealing with small independent bookshops. So many of you will know uh, Causeway Bay books. Um, so uh, Mr. Lam, who was um, abducted in Hong Kong, um, taken to mainland China, he was a bookseller, uh, later moved to Taiwan and set up there. I'm sure many of you are familiar with his story. Um, so he has a number of our books um, and we do a, a good trade through there. Um, we are talking to a couple of other people um, about getting our books in to, to their stores. So uh, there's a, a shop called Taiwan um, which is by NTU, um, which uh, is a is a very sort of uh, deep green uh, Taiwan bookstore. Um, they're looking at taking our books as well. Uh, but beyond that, it's it, it, it's tricky. Um, the, the bookstore scene in Taiwan for English books is dominated by um, a couple of big players. Uh, well, now mostly mostly athlete. Um, now that uh, page one has gone, um, the caves don't really do much in, in English anymore. So uh, so yeah, it's, it's really quite a small market. Um, if anybody wants to, to take my idea of, uh, uh, you know, buying a buying a camper van installing a, a mobile bookshop in there and touring around Taiwan, please, I'll, I'll help you in any way I can. Uh, if I was if I was uh, 15 years younger and had no kids, I'd be I'd be right on that. <laughs> Fantastic. Uh, so I see we have a, um, a question about Taiwanese um, indigenous literature. Uh, I think this one might be uh, this could be directed to uh, to both of you um, uh, asking whether uh how you see that that market is it too uh, niche um i was um but i think that nikki you have published on indigenous taiwanese literature yes. did you want to say anything on that question oh yes um for um oh um for the camera the uh, tower literature series uh indeed yes the um um the the Canberra Press it uh, told us that well of course you know the uh, works are in, included in you know uh, included in our uh, book series are selected by committee, and and so but of course we okay after like a six books you know the publication the six books then we are actually thinking like uh, what to uh, publish, and so. Um, and so we, 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 we receive, um, we welcome, you know, the, the, the publishers and also uh, as well as the uh, uh, readers uh, uh, suggestions. And, and yes, the, um, the editor of the Canberra Press told us that uh, if you know, next time, you know, for the next uh, translation project, they are actually interested in, you know, some um, topics. And one of the topic is the indigenous knowledge because yeah, it can, you know, because the, the phenomenon of the um, uh, 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 the the history, you know, like uh, Taiwan indigenous is not only in Taiwan. You can also find a similar because of the modernized globalization and so uh, the indigenous uh, people they have the same, you know, uh, fate they encounter the same fate, and so uh, this story or indigenous knowledge you can, you know, really. Have like like echo uh, can attract some more uh, people and yeah and another thing I want to say is uh, actually the uh, Canberra Prize they uh, suggest us to have the um, like a supernatural yeah mm. so like ghost story and and also the uh, like a yao guai you know because recently these uh, kind of topics are uh, become so popular you know also in Taiwan you know also I received a proposal you know from uh, maybe UCLA student because she wanted to do a research in Taiwan and the topic is the uh, yao guai yeah so yeah so actually I have questions is like what what do uh, the, the audience or the reader want to read what what they want to know uh, 
about Taiwan. So this is also I'm interested because so far we have like uh, gender, uh, uh, the LGBT, the queer, queer uh, study, queer literature, and we also have the indi indigenous and and uh, and the white terror. And so what next? What what do you like? <laughs> this is my question. Although time is running out. OK, so we'll leave that one open to uh, audience to come up with uh, suggestions. Um, there was one other question that was part of that in indigenous um, uh, question was asking about if there are other models for promoting Taiwanese literature in the way that other Asian countries have done, for example, Japanese uh, literature. And that also makes me think about the question about whether Taiwan's government should do more to promote Taiwan studies uh, publications. Um, to what ex um, uh, extent should, for example, the Ministry of Culture um, help promote these kind of uh, books? Um, I can imagine that, for example, your Taiwan Studies or Nikki's Taiwan Studies literature, that probably does get some government support. But I, but I don't know whether that's the case for uh, yours, Michael, unless it's a translated um, um, uh, volume. I, per personally, I wish the, yeah. they would um, find a way to see this as part of their kind of remit, but I'm not, at least in my series, I haven't really felt that yet. Yes, I, I think that there, there are some issues here because it's, there's nothing less cool than a government promoting something. Um, <laughs> so you, you need to be in the background to, to, to really make that work. So the, the example of Murakami in, in Japan is a great one because it's had a lot of government funding, but you don't know that it's the Japanese government funding it. Um, what what happens in Taiwan? So we've we've uh, got a bit of money at the moment to translate um, a novel, but that really only covers the translation costs. Um, and there are some small grants available for promotion, but but really that's it would cover flying the author over to say the UK to do an event and then flying them back, and that's pretty much it. And if you're going to 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 push a writer, so the best example of this is Omini, Um and uh, uh, Stolen Bicycle and The Man with the Compound Eyes. Um, the Man with the Compound Eyes got tremendous reviews and uh, uh, Daryl Sturck, uh, who translated it, is, is a wonderful translator. Um, and, and, uh, and Stolen Bicycle likewise. And of course the shortlisting um, for the Booker, um, is it the Booker? I forget now, got that wrong, um, was, was a huge help too. But what Tim might be suggesting there is around Man Booker, thank you Tim. Um, what Tim is suggesting there is um, is to sort of pick a few champions, I think, uh, like Japan has done, and then push those champions um, heavily. Uh, I, I think Taiwan could benefit from something like that, but I, I don't see the short-term prospects of that happening. I think the Ministry of Culture um, anchor authors, that's, that's a good phrase, Tim, thank you. Um, I, I think the Ministry of Culture uh, approach is um, more more aimed at um, volume. So getting as many books as they can translated into English. My my feeling about that is that a lot of what's translated never finds an audience. Um, and that's a great shame. Um, it's not very well promoted. And uh, you're also looking at a problem of, uh, you know, are you picking the right books um, to, 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 to translate in the first place? So I think the example of, of looking at Yao Guai literature, for example, uh, it's a really good idea. Um, China has recently had a lot of success with sci-fi, uh, so genre fiction is, is is another interesting thing to look at. It comes with its own ready ready-made community. Um, but yeah, I think I think the Ministry of Culture could certainly do a lot more um, than they're currently doing. And, and Nikki, in your case, the Taiwan Literature Series, your uh, would you say is that working with the Ministry of Culture directly, or is it uh, via the uh, the Museum of Taiwan Literature? Uh, because National Museum of Taiwan Literature is actually affiliated to the, uh, uh, type, uh, the, the Ministry of Culture. So actually they're the same. So they are from the same funding. And so, yeah, and but OK, because actually in the past years, you know, maybe for many decades, at least three decades, the uh, government funds, uh, the, actually, you know, uh, governments really a found, uh, uh, have a huge like a funding for translation projects They're already many, many years, but uh, it's, you know, it's not well, how to say circulated, you know, mm. it's like, you know, translated and then 
published, but you don't know where you can buy those books. Maybe they are just stored into the um, like library, and so it doesn't reach the uh, like all audience more like reader readers. So for this project, um, because because the government because the uh, uh, the National Tower, uh, Museum of Tower Literature, they they know this problem. So, uh, so this project is, is particularly we have to cooperate with the like uh, uh, the camera press, you know, the the publisher who is like a business. And so, so actually, one of the purpose is for us is to have uh, the the group, you know, those uh, kind of um, make like interest, you know, attracts. Uh, certain like attracts more uh, readers and uh, you know and and make uh, make this uh, our book series in you know in the markets and so that the market decide <laughs> if we uh, were good or not or should we you know so it's it's actually a test and we want to really make it more like a commercial. But uh, just like like me, because I really I, I don't have much experience. I still have to learn uh, a lot from that. So uh, I hope I can do a better job in the future. <laughs> yeah, but I do take your, your point. I know this is something that, that that's been discussed in some of the book projects I've worked with with partners in, in Taiwan that um, uh, often it can be easier to get something published in in, in Taiwan. But then the problem is the distribution. Um, even working with a German publisher, I, uh, I've also had question marks about the distribution. So that was part of the reason why I did shift to working with uh, with Routledge, with, despite its constraints. Uh, I see we have a question from uh, from uh, from Ratti uh, Kab Kabinawa, who's asked the question about whether it's possible to publish or translate books in other languages other than English or um, or Chinese to reach. Uh, different types of um, uh, of readerships. Yeah, um, so in in general terms, yes, it is. Uh, the Books About Taiwan program uh, offers grants for uh, all manner of languages, um, so they are very interested in reaching new audiences. So um, I think uh, you know there there are translating books into uh, Vietnamese, into Russian, into Bahasa. Um, you know there are a number of these things happening. Again, there might be the problem with the connection to to then promoting those books and getting them in distributed distributed. But um, but the the funding does exist to do that. Yes. Um, speaking now for Camphor Press, uh, because we do everything in house and all three of us are native English speakers, we don't work in any languages other than English, unfortunately. Beyond our competency. And and in in the field of literature, are you, are you kind of hoping to move into other languages, Nikki? Oh yeah, so actually this um, the the translation projects by uh, National uh, Museum of Taiwan Literature, they are you know it's not only English uh, translation, they also uh, promote uh, in uh, Japanese and also some European languages. Yes, yeah, so uh, but but of course you know the English. Is, you know, so they can reach really the biggest, you know, the largest uh, 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 communities you know, of the readers. So, yeah, so English is, of course, the most important one. Yeah, but uh, yes, this is um, the, the, the government is, uh, you know, they, they, they try to promote in, in different country and with the uh, in different languages. Yes, that's what they are doing. But one thing I'm kind of curious about, and again, it applies probably more to uh, to Nikki, with the kind of the growth of uh, the new immigrant community in in Taiwan, with a growing um, Vietnamese, particularly or Indonesian communities. Um, uh, over time, could this also become part of Taiwanese literature? Um, I was just kind of kind of curious about. Um, uh, your views on that, and and perhaps also um, a similar kind of question to to Michael. Um, do you feel that that might be an interesting kind of angle, uh, a kind of different angle to uh, understand Taiwan, maybe from the perspective of a, a migrant worker um, uh, or um, a um, migrant spouse? Because we academically that kind of literature has grown, but not really from that voice. I think there might be something in documentaries. 
so uh, so that's maybe Nikki. Do you want to go first on that question? Oh yes, yeah, so, um, yeah. Actually, uh, the, the the governments, you know, uh, they are uh, doing the the, the sales bond, and so they are really made a lot of efforts to uh, either to include those um, like uh, the people, uh, the migrants, you know, from uh, like Southeast Asia, and 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 uh, you know to include them into the um, like. Um, how to say it's like okay uh, actually my other projects you know to uh, kind of publish uh, the kind of children book and this is actually oh. um, is we, we translate it into uh, Taiwanese and also Vietnamese so yeah so government is actually the king you know to do uh, this and 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 so this is the one thing and for uh, because they are good we in, in Taiwan they are more and more uh, immigrants and the second generations like in our class, you know, they're like at least two or three, you know, the second generation of the, yeah, the, 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 the mothers from uh, from Southeast Asia. And and so, yes, yeah, so I think they, 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 they have their own story and they, you know, gradually getting involved in the society and they write their stories. And also uh, uh, in Taiwan, we have the uh, like awards is uh, it's the particularly for uh, migrant workers. So yeah, I don't know if they still uh, continue this. Uh, I don't know if it's a kind of stop because of the pandemic, but as I can remember, uh, we have this uh, 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 we have this. Uh, mm. Yeah, <laughs> that, that also reminds me that maybe I don't know. Is there a really an award for uh, uh, English language uh, fiction or nonfiction about uh, Taiwan? That would be I would love to see that kind of um, that kind of book prize. That's something that we need to kind of push the um, I'm pretty sure there is for, let's say, a translate a prize for translations, but I'm not sure if there's 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 one that kind of captures the kind of stuff that we do. But um, uh, in the final couple of minutes, what did you feel about Michael about that issue about migrant perspective books? Yeah, so um, we we published uh, this book. I can see that the Migrante. Mm um last year and uh the irony of of it is so it's it's um it follows the a uh, a young man from the philippines who um is living in a pretty desperate situation and signs on to be a fisherman in in the taiwanese fleet um and sort of chronicles his um unfortunate story um as he goes through through life on a, a fishing trawler um and also you know he has some some uh Ah, uh, looks like we lost um, uh, uh, Michael there. Uh, while he's kind of just reconnecting in the last couple of minutes, we just have a question about um, uh, word limits. Um, I, I can respond on on that one, um, at least from the series I'm involved in, the Routledge Taiwan series. Usually we aim um, at around 100,000 um, uh, words. So we, can, we, we can go a little bit below and a little bit um, uh, above uh, that. Um, yeah, sorry, uh, Michael. You, OK, uh, if you if you believe it, I'm in northern England and my computer sh just uh, crashed because it was too hot. Ah, so, <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's a very nice day outside. Uh, sorry. So um, I was saying about uh, uh, Joe's book, the irony of it is um, so the story follows a, 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 a Filipino migrant fisherman um, and it deals. He also meets um, other Filipino migrants um, who are working um in factories and uh, domestic situations but the irony of it is is that it's written by um jw henley who is a white canadian um expat living in in taiwan um and he addresses this in the preface uh, in in his sort of introduction to the book where he says um he was approached by i mean he's he's kind of reasonably well known writing on migrant issues um he's been to the the Philippines many times have been out on the on the boats and so on. Um, he was approached by uh, a number of migrant workers who said we don't have the time to do this. Um, you know, many um, domestic workers get Sunday off perhaps um, and, and everybody knows the kind of struggles they face. Uh, and so the main the main problem there is is people um, in that situation who have the, the time and the mental space to write. Um, and so what Joe did in his story 
is um, he had uh, a group of, of, of migrant workers um, who he interviewed, who were talking to him, talking through their experiences with him, um, and he created a synthesis out of that into the novel. Um, and he says right at the beginning, I would rather it was not me telling this story. Um, mm -hmm. I would rather it was um, these people using their own voices. But the, the constraints on them at the moment are such that, uh, you know, if it's not going to get said, then I should say it. Um, so I think that's that's the big worry for me in, in, in getting this um, more understanding of um, migrant migrant workers in particular. So that, you know, there, there is immigration from Southeast Asia um, of um, Southeast Asian spouses coming in and they may have a different situation. But for those who are here on who are in Taiwan on, on three year uh, work contracts, you know, it, as, as many of you will know, sort of writing is a um, is a mentally draining exercise. Um, it requires a lot of time and, and, and space to do. Uh, so that's very difficult if you're working as hard as these people do. Great. OK, so we've now uh, uh, just gone over our, our time, so we're going to have to bring things to a close.